All right, I have an, a, a story that is really of great concern. Uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran broadcasting company, IRIB, uh, is now reporting that their channels on the Hotbird Communications satellite that they lease to basically get their programming out are being jammed by British technicians operating out of Bahrain. Now, when communications start to be jammed, when the mass TV starts to be jammed, and we, we know that uh, press TV uh, just got yanked off the air in Great Britain at the urging uh, of an Israeli group, this suggests the attack on Iran is imminent because whatever's going to happen, whatever false flag is going to happen, they want to make sure Iran cannot get out a counter argument. Remember, three days before 9 11, the FBI went around the United States of America shutting down Iranian, chari- I'm sorry, uh, 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 Islamic charity websites. Anybody who would have stood up and said, wait a minute, let us not rush to judgment on who is behind 9 11, was silenced three days before the actual event in New York. So this is the same thing happening. And by the way, more and more, it's getting difficult to reach the servers for Press TV and uh, uh, the Tehran Times website had trouble reaching that. This is a red warning sign that something bad is about to happen. It's going to be a lie, a false flag, and they want to make sure that a contrary argument cannot get out. We're going to talk about what the possible false flags might be in the next Uh, hour here but it's obvious the push for sanctions has flopped because even though Europe has said yeah six months from now we'll finally come on board we have this growing Asian dollar exclusion zone that are set to buy Iran's oil and they're not going to use dollars doing it China just uh, leased two additional super tankers they're going to start buying all the oil that Iran wants to sell them and so is India and so is Russia And so all that's going to happen is there's going to be a scarcity of Iranian oil inside the United States and in Europe, and the already crippled American and European economies are going to collapse, and it won't do any harm to Iran whatsoever. So now the U.S. and the European Union are in a corner of their own making. They can't bank off the sanctions without it looking like a political defeat. Israel won't let them do it anyway. And Israel could care less what happens to America in the European Union. The poorer we are, the more of us they can buy with their money. And so the only alternative right now is blitzkrieg Iran and steal the oil. And that, I think, is what they're going to do. And we'll talk about that in more detail when we come back from news and commercials. So let's get back to this push for war in Iran. The reason for the push is obvious. If the U.S. and the EU go forward with these oil sanctions... The American and European economies are going to collapse, and it's not going to affect Iran, because Iran cannot give up weapons of mass destruction it doesn't actually have. And you know this is all about Israel, or they wouldn't bother quoting Netanyahu saying, yes, this is a step in the right direction. The direction is another war on Israel's enemies. Smash up Iran. Smash up all these other countries so they're little tiny pieces. So Israel, which is about half the size of New Jersey, is the power in the region. It's Israeli imperialism is what's going on here. So the sanctions are an absolute disaster economically for the uh, United States and for the European Union. And the United States and the European Union cannot back off the sanctions now without it looking like a political defeat, and Israel won't let them do it anyway. And Israel doesn't care how much suffering the American and European people have to go through. You know, that's what the Gentiles are for, to paraphrase Gene Simmons. So the only alternative to just sitting there and allowing the economies of both the United States and Europe to collapse from sky-high sky oil prices is to invade Iran now, to blitzkrieg across it and grab the oil wells. But the U.S. and Israel have to do it in a way that it makes it look like Iran is somehow to blame, or we're going to have Russia and China coming in on the other side. So there has to be some kind of a false flag. We were talking earlier about the USS Enterprise. That warning's gone already all over the net. At this point, I would say we've probably bluffed them out of trying to sacrifice a U.S. warship. But it doesn't mean they're not going to think about what else can we do that they, the, those morons out there in the real world have not already thought of. 
I mean, there are all kinds of false flags. I mean, considering the reality that j- they're jamming the Iranian TV satellites on Hotbird, that they're yanking uh, press TV in Great Britain, they're going to have to shut down the alternative media and the blogs somehow in order to prevent doubts about their false flag from being raised. So maybe it's a cyber false flag. We've been hearing all this stuff about anonymous and hackers this, and there's this one that Israel says is, is attacking them constantly. So it might be a cyber false flag, a virtual false flag. The Internet gets crashed, and they say, oh, it's those gosh darn Iranians. They've brought down the Internet. Why would Iran do something like that? The alternative media is the only voice of sanity in this war-crazy world right now. Attack the Super Bowl? I mean, that's already been dealt with in a movie. Uh, The uh, Black Sunday, it was called. Maybe even stage an attack during the State of the Union tonight. But they got to do something to make it look like this is all Iran's fault. And this story about weapons of mass destruction and nuclear weapons is falling on deaf ears because we got lied to about weapons of mass destruction before. And we remember... Contrary to the hopes of the corporate media and Wall Street and Israel, we remember we were lied to before. And we remember how many thousands of our children came home in those cheap metal boxes covered with those flags made in China over a lie, the lie of the century. But we're in a new century and we've got a new lie to deal with here. The reality is this embargo can't work. And the U.S. government and the European Union are now in a corner. Because without Iranian oil, our oil prices and fuel prices in this country are going to start going upward. Because Obama failed to bring in that high-producing well, that deep well down in the Gulf of Mexico. That turned into an absolute Charlie Foxtrot. And now British Petroleum is coming out and saying, yeah, the Obama administration pressured us into underreporting the damage. So uh, I'm expecting a big bang, maybe not the enterprise, but there's going to be something. Because if Israel and the U.S. just invade Iran, Russia and China have already said they will come in on the other side. And, we, and World War III will really crank up into overdrive. And the problem with that is the United States cannot win a conventional world war. Because we don't have the manufacturing, the manpower, or the money that allowed this nation to prevail in big mistake number one and big mistake number two. And as we head into big mistake number three, there will be a point where the U.S. government will realize they're losing a conventional war. And between that realization that they're losing a conventional war and final surrender, the mushrooms will start sprouting. Because remember, for all the talk about Iran and Iraq and all those gosh darn Arab Muslim nations, one and only one nation has ever actually used nuclear weapons on another country. And that is the United States of America. So, these are very, very, very dark times. And I'm very angry and frustrated that for all the effort of all of us out here on the blogosphere, Jeff Rents myself, all these people, thousands now. We couldn't find anybody in the government who had any sense of morality or ethics or even just the wisdom to understand. We're looking at a potential extinction-level event. If this thing gets out of control and goes nuclear. And we're already looking at a government that is just sociopathic, bordering and psychotic, They're so addicted to money and power, they can't let go. They will turn those little brass keys in the silos. From their point of view, they will have no choice. They will gladly blow up 90% of the world if it keeps the remaining surviving 10% their debt slaves for the next 1,000 years. That is the danger that we are all in right now. 